Today, you get to hear me rant about diets. That's the beauty of the internet. If you can, don't see the content out there that you so desperately think the world needs, you can just make it and then put it on places like YouTube for you to regret <laughs> in 10 years, I'm sure. All together now. But I'm still going to tell you everything I hate about people who talk about diets on the internet who aren't doctors. Because I think one thing the internet really needs a lot more of about diets is superstition and pseudoscience and these kind of like medieval ideas about the humors and toxins and stuff that people sprout when they talk about nutrition and your gut and all this kind of stuff. There's so much wishful thinking um, involved with that whole thing. Right? And shame! Don't forget a huge wagon load of shame! It's not some sort of abstract scientific concept when you're talking about nutrition and diets and stuff. You're talking about people and their self-esteem and how other people treat them and how they feel physically. And I think a lot of people who are really ignorant and like to, you know, mount any high horse they possibly can, like to be like, oh, you know, people who don't lose weight are all like, nah, lazy and stuff, it's just calories in, calories out, and you know, if you just stop cheating on your diet, you'd be fine, you know, if you had as much willpower as I did, I'm just like, oh. And I'm overcome with chagrin. As an aspiring teenage anorexic ballerina, um, my father, who is a doctor, fielded a whole lot of very in-depth questions for me about diets and calories and metabolism. But he was always very clear about sort of how my body functioned and, you know, why and when and how it needed energy, like from calories or sleep. <laughs> After talking with him as a teenager, I kind of acquired this understanding of how um, your metabolism works and how diets do or don't work with that. And I keep waiting to see someone, anyone, talk about that anywhere in the way that, you know, I've come to understand it. The impending government shutdown, you know, looms, and I suddenly realized that kind of the way that it will go provides an absolutely spot-on an analogy for what happens when you are operating under a caloric deficit. The whole entire government, like, is not going to shut down. For example, all the federal penitentiaries, they're not just going to be like, hey, inmates, go on vacation and come back when Congress figures it out. There are certain essential functions that do not um, stop, even in the event of a government shutdown. But there are many other things that are going to be shut down. The EPA is one of the ones that's going to be largely sort of suspended, and one of the consequences for that is that uh, new permits for um, offshore drilling will not be able to be processed. So that's the kind of thing, like, do we need, do we need <laughs> another offshore drilling rig to be approved in the next five minutes? We'll be fine. You know, we can wait five minutes or a couple weeks, you know, but not five years. The point that that really helps to illustrate is that even in times of crisis, there are certain bodily systems that, you know, do need to be funded by calories. And there are some that you can sort of suspend for a while, but not indefinitely. An example of one such system is bone repair and maintenance. It's really important to maintain your bones, not just because it provides your skeleton, but also because the bone marrow produces red blood cells, and you need those, and also a lot of your um, immune system is manufactured in your bones. And they take a lot of abuse over the course of just an everyday day. It was something between like 10 to 25 percent. It was, it was a very substantial fraction of your daily caloric intake goes toward just that maintenance. If you leave it for too long, it gets harder and harder to repair, and the chances that you're going to experience some sort of catastrophic side effect from, you know, neglecting the maintenance of your bones, you know, and, and the bone marrow, gets higher and higher and higher. But it's one of those things, like, you can kind of deal without it up to a point, but then uh, all hell's gonna break loose. And another thing, okay, and this is pertinent only to the ladies out there, but if you're a lady and your body fat percentage gets way too low, you know, you're gonna stop menstruating. <laughs> there was some science somewhere that said that, you know, the reason that women, you know, have this sort of uh, average percentage of body fat between like, I don't know, it was like 18 and 30 percent, is that that amount of fat on an average female corresponds to the minimum amount of calories you would need to gestate a baby to term and breastfeed it for some number of months um, in a famine. Your body doesn't know the difference between a diet and a famine. It has the same effect. You're not getting 
caloric funding, either way. But what does any of this have to do with the whole calories in, calories out, just eat less and you'll lose weight thing that's been irritating me so? Let's say you're like, I'm not going to eat for three days. And you calculate out how much of an energy deficit you're supposed to have from that, how many pounds of fat that's supposed to correspond to. It's not going to work out. Ask me how I know. <laughs> you're not going to be able to lose weight as quickly because your body is operating under austerity measures. Your body's going to go, oh, oh, it's famine time again. I'm not taking my, you know, bones in for service until I know, you know, I can make it through this week and still, you know, keep the brainstem going, like, you know, in the heart and all that kind of stuff. Like, those things need to come first and we'll get around to all the other stuff hopefully soon. It's just like how you would change your spending patterns if, you know, all of a sudden you found yourself, like, fired. Poor old you who's just been fired, you're like, well, I was going to take my car to Jiffy Lube to get the oil changed today, but I really need to hang on to my money, so I am going to put off getting my car serviced and hope that I'm able to, you know, come up with some income before my engine gets, uh, foobarred. There are plenty of other people on the internet who talk about more sensible ways to get healthy, you know, and or lose weight if you want exercise, both to burn calories and also to increase, uh, your muscle mass because muscles, just generally speaking, even at rest, burn more calories than like your nose does. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> get rid of all your extra noses and replace them with biceps. <laughs> I was really lucky as a teenager to have my dad. Basically what he taught me and what I wish more people were taught is that the bastion of society that tries to get you with the whole colors and colors, are. those folks, whether deliberately or not, are not dealing with you in good faith. With that in mind, go eat, you know? Be nice to yourself. And, oh god, I mean, especially if you're still growing, I mean, like, that's another service. It's, like, pretty essential, but your body will suspend it. It has to. <laughs>